Hello everybody, it's Uncle No Identity and uh, in today's video I'm going to try doing a painting experiment. So me and my friend the other day we went to Lowe's and Home Depot and we were going to buy a thing of spray paint because if you want to buy some spray paint for your plastic models you can get a whole lot more paint by going to Lowe's and Home Depot than you can going to a hobby store and buying a Tamiya rattle can, which is only this big, versus the ones at Home Depot and Lowe's, where the can might be, uh, let's say, twice the size, basically, twice the size of the can, for around the same money, maybe even cheaper, who knows. So, I was looking at some paint schemes for the McLaren, uh, and I found this really nice color called Volcano Orange. So I thought, I think I can do Volcano Orange, we'll give it a shot. So, for this experiment, I have this rear plate piece that sits on the back of the car the exhaust comes out of here and we're gonna try to paint this I've already used some 3600 grit sandpaper or more of a uh, sanding film actually that is 32,000 3200 sorry 3200 sanding sponge and try to give this a flat finish so it's not shiny. Gives ourselves a little bit of bite for the paint to adhere to. And for the experiment, I think I have a color ratio that might work. So we're going to use this right here, this little painting tray. We're going to use this spot right here. And I have two colors. I have fire red and orange, both of them are in the Vallejo Model Air series. And I think I've got a painting ratio that's going to work, so in today's video we are going to test that out. So I have a cup of fresh water and we're going to uh, Not trying to get any dirt in the paint. We've got this testers tray too. I'll pour some water in here. So I think for the paint ratio I'm going to go with, it's going to be a six parts paint to one part water. And so we're going to do okay so there's one drop of water and for the six parts paint I think we'll use four orange and two fire red So there's four orange. And two drops red. Alrighty, so we're going to find We will use this brush. That's a very good looking brush. We're going to dip the brush also in water just to get it a little moist and ready to go. And we will 
mix the colors together blending it with the water I'm going to add just another drop of water to the formula. So we're running two parts water and six parts paint. Just to thin it out a little bit more. Get the towel, dry off my hand, and now it's time to paint. When we paint our models, we want to make sure we use smooth brush strokes. We want our paint to be thin. It's okay if the paint scheme is kind of blotchy at first and it doesn't quite look full. And that is just because we need to add multiple layers onto the model's surface. By layering the paint, we can sort of, I don't know, we, we layer the paint just because we have to. That's just the way it's got to be in order to maintain the smoothness of the panels. If you look real closely, you might see this faint sort of divot here. If I was to use a very thick paint without thinning, there's a possibility I could fill that with a lot of paint and then that detail would be missing. Uh, it's kind of like Hot Wheels. Uh, I saw this video. This guy was doing a restoration on a Countach. And originally it was white and he repainted it to green. And the white paint was terribly thick. And this was from the factory too. It was a factory paint scheme. From the factory. Terribly thick. He used his aircraft paint stripper and stripped the paint off and found this beautiful array of panel lines. A great divider of the door and body seams and uh, the hood. Everything was beautiful on the casting. Just the company used too thick of a paint and so when he repainted his in green he thinned his paint and used an airbrush and the car looked so much better that's why we thin our paints so we can really allow the detail of the kit to shine through <clears throat> and every now and then, just for the sake of it, I like to continue to add just a little touch more of water every time I go. That's just my style. I like to do it. Just keeps the paint thin because it might thicken up on you. You don't know. It is airbrush paint, but even then, you still have to thin that even if you're running airbrush. So, we have some lines here that we'll need to take care of. And actually, here's a tip. Use one of these little gator clip. So now I can actually paint here and not worry about my hands getting covered in paint. So we're just gonna
apply the paint here in a front to back motion, like so. Sorry about the focus on this thing, it is a phone camera after all. That looks really nice. And again, you'll see some lines here, but we can smooth those out with another round of paint. Look at that paint when it goes on wet. It's super glossy. Unfortunately, though, it does dry to a matte finish, which is fine. I can deal with that. All we have to do is spray a few coats of gloss clear over it, and we'll have a really nice shiny model. <coughs> so, there we have, there we have it. As we can see, again, we have brush strokes going side to side. How do we fix that? We just brush in a front to back, or in this case, a back to front motion. We go side to side, then front to back, and side to side, and front to back. This sort of, it weaves the paint onto the model. Wow, that sounds really weird to say. But I mean, that's how you make a, that's how you weave a basket. You have some strands going left and right and some going up and down and they crisscross over each other. Same thing with the paint. These paint strokes are going sideways, so we want to go up and down. And then when the up and down's dry, we go sideways again. Now here, it looks like some paint might have been pooling so I will add just a touch more of water and really pick up the paint and pull it to the water section. Don't add the water into the paint, sort of add water on the side. I like to event every now and then just blow dry the model, or at least attempt to. Dang, dang it, I got paint on me. If only I had a taller stand, which I know I've got a taller stand somewhere. Just don't know where it is. Ah, the angles are horrible. Okay, yeah, there we go. If I hold it like that, we should be good. So here I am again going in a side-to-side -side motion. Going all the way up the panel. Prevent thick spots and just pull the paint. So right here it's pooling, so we can let's go front to back.
just like so. That looks pretty cool. <clears throat> Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this little video, and I'll see you guys in the next one, where this paint will be totally, uh, the paint scheme will be done all the way, it's going to look really nice. And then I have all of my other panels I have to work on too, and in the next video I'll show you what they all look like. All painted up properly. So, until then... I'm Uncle No Identity, and I hope you like this video. Cheers!